Hey everybody, Mr. Troy here. Got a quick video for you on dependent systems. How do you recognize that a system of equations has infinitely many solutions? And once you do, what do you do with it? All right, here we go. So to start with this system, um, again, I don't know that this has infinitely many solutions yet. Looking at it, I want to kind of reduce the top row and reduce the second row by the greatest common factor. So I'm going to multiply the top row by one third. And I'm going to multiply the second row by one half. I'm not going to do that to the third row because uh, there's no common factor between all of those terms. All right, now I'm going to do operations between the rows. And in this case, I'm going to use the third row combined with the first row and the second row combined with the first row. I chose to use the first row with both of those because uh, the negative 2 is compatible with both the 2 and the 4 from the second row and the third row. Okay, so that's how those combinations work. I had to take that really slowly kind of in my head because I wanted to make sure that I got all of my, uh, you know, plus a negatives correct. I wanted to make sure that I did all that addition correct. You may notice from the bottom two lines that those two lines are equivalent. If you don't, then the next thing you would do would be to try and uh, kind of work those uh, the y away in the bottom row. So if you didn't notice the equivalence between these two lines, then you would work to eliminate this position. So let's just work under the assumption that I didn't notice that. You know, maybe I was busy uh, eating a snack or drinking a LaCroix and I just overlooked it. So by changing everything to a uh, lead variable of y, or uh, negative 1y, it makes it a lot easier to uh, work to combine these rows. Um, you don't have to go down to one, you can also multiply both rows to make a larger number. So instead of um, dividing each one of these to get one and negative one, I could, for example, multiply them to get 12 and negative 12. Uh, that's the sort of thing you do in uh, algebra one. Now, if I can write my variables correctly, That's a Z. When I combine these two rows together, so when I do row three plus row two, I get this. And it's this zero equals zero that lets me know that I have infinitely many solutions. So a system that has infinitely many solutions is called dependent. The reason for that is because one of the rows depends on the other two. I'll talk more about that later. So in that case, you are told to set z equal to a and then solve in terms of that. So if z equals a, then we back substitute into the previous equation. Opposite of y minus a equals 4. So y well, let's do this first. a plus 4. 
y equals negative a minus 4. And then we plug both of those into the equation above that. So negative 2x minus 2 times negative a minus 4 minus a equals 8. And we're going to solve that for x. So negative 2x plus 2a, 2a, not 2a's, negative 2x plus 2a plus 8 minus a equals 8. Let's see, the 8's cancel out. We get negative 2x plus a equals 0, or x equals a over 2. So if you pick an a value, say you pick 6, then that would give you the x value and the y value, 3 and negative 10, that you could plug into the system that would work. All right, so I mentioned this idea of linear dependence. And this is way beyond the scope of our course, but it's really interesting, so I thought I'd throw it in here. The reason that this worked out to be infinitely many solutions is because there's some relationship between row 1 and row 2 and row 3. So in this particular case, and this took me dusting off remembering how to do long forgotten math, but in this particular case, if you take negative 5 twelfths times row 1 plus 3 eighths times row 2, you get row 3. Or put into maybe simpler terms, negative 10 row 1 plus 9 row 2 equals 24 row 3. That's where the term linearly dependent comes from because row 3 depends on rows 1 and 2. Now, you certainly don't need to know that. I just thought it was too interesting uh, not to put here at the end of the video. All right, hope that was helpful.